What is a diverging lens? A diverging lens has at least one concave side. The shape of the lens causes the entering light rays to spread apart when they leave the lens. A diverging lens is often used in combination with converging lenses. Eyeglasses to correct nearsightedness use diverging lenses. What is the focal length of a lens? The focal length measures the strength of a lens. Consider a converging lens. Rays from a very distant object come together at the focal point. The focal length is the distance from the lens to the focal point. Lenses with very convex surfaces have shorter focal lengths. While flatter lenses have longer focal lengths. For diverging lenses the focal point is virtual. That is, it is the point from which the diverging rays leaving. The lens would have come from if a point object were placed there. What are total internal reflection and critical angle? Total internal reflection occurs when a ray of light in a medium with a higher index of refraction strikes the interface between that medium and one with a lower index of refraction. When the incident rays are at a small angle with respect to the perpendicular to the interface the rays pass through the interface being refracted to a larger angle. As the angle of incidence increases so does the refracted angle. At the critical angle the refracted angle is 90 degrees, that is, the ray's direction is along the interface. If the angle of incidence is increased any more there is only a reflected ray. The refracted ray no longer exists. Because all the light is reflected it is called total internal reflection. What are total internal reflection and critical angle? Total internal reflection occurs when a ray of light in a medium with a higher index of refraction strikes the interface between that medium and one with a lower index of refraction. When the incident rays are at a small angle with respect to the perpendicular to the interface the rays pass through the interface being refracted to a larger angle. As the angle of incidence increases so does the refracted angle. At the critical angle the refracted angle is 90 degrees, that is, the ray's direction is along the interface. If the angle of incidence is increased any more there is only a reflected ray. The refracted ray no longer exists. Because all the light is reflected it is called total internal reflection. If you open your eyes underwater, can you see out of the water? Another example of total internal reflection can be seen when you are underwater. 
if you look straight up out of the water, you will see the sky and any other visible surroundings directly above the water. If, however, you look out of the water at an angle of 48 degrees or more from the vertical, you will not see out of the water, but instead will see a reflection from the bottom of the water. The next time you are in a pool or a lake, try looking up out of the water and you will see a point on the surface where you no longer can see out of the pool, for the light has reached its critical angle. If you open your eyes underwater, can you see out of the water? Another example of total internal reflection can be seen when you are underwater. If you look straight up out of the water, you will see the sky and any other visible surroundings directly above the water. If, however, you look out of the water at an angle of 48 degrees or more from the vertical, you will not see out of the water, but instead will see a reflection from the bottom of the water. The next time you are in a pool or a lake, try looking up out of the water and you will see a point on the surface where you no longer can see out of the pool, for the light has reached its critical angle. How do optical fibers use total internal reflection to transmit information? Strands of glass fiber commonly known as optical fibers. Use the principle of total internal reflection to transmit information near the speed of light. The fiber has an inner core of glass with a high refractive index surrounded by a cladding of glass with a lower index. A laser sends light into the end of a strand of fiber. When the light strikes the interface between the core and the cladding, the light is reflected back into the cable, continuing to move down the length of the fiber. Light or near-infrared radiation can travel kilometers through fibers without significant energy loss. One reason is the total internal reflection. The second reason is that are made from materials designed to absorb as little as possible of the infrared radiation. A second advantage of optical fibers is that information sent through the fibers is more secure because it doesn't escape the fiber and thus be accessible to those trying to intercept the information. How do optical fibers use total internal reflection to transmit information? Strands of glass fiber, commonly known as optical fibers. Use the principle of total internal reflection to transmit information near the speed of light. The fiber has an inner core of glass with a high refractive index surrounded by a cladding of glass with a lower index. A laser sends light into the end of a strand of fiber. When the light strikes the interface between the core and the cladding, the light is reflected back into the cable, continuing to move down the length of the fiber. 
light or near-infrared radiation can travel kilometers through fibers without significant energy loss. One reason is the total internal reflection. The second reason is that are made from materials designed to absorb as little as possible of the infrared radiation. A second advantage of optical fibers is that information sent through the fibers is more secure. Because it doesn't escape the fiber and thus be accessible to those trying to intercept the information. How did fiber optics originate? The idea that light could travel through glass strands originated as far back as the 1840s. When physicists Daniel Collodin and Jacques Bobinet, 1794-1872, demonstrated that light could travel through bending water jets in fountains. The first person to display an image through a bundle of optical fibers was a medical student in Germany by the name of Heinrich Lamm, who, in 1930, used a bundle of fibers to project the image of a light bulb. In his research, Lamm ultimately used optical fibers to observe and probe areas of the human body without making large incisions. From that point on, serious research in optical fibers ensued. Expanding later with the development of the laser. Fiber optics are glass fibers that transmit laser light that can contain digital information more quickly and efficiently than metal cables. How did fiber optics originate? The idea that light could travel through glass strands originated as far back as the 1840s. When physicists Daniel Collodin and Jacques Bobinet, 1794-1872, demonstrated that light could travel through bending water jets in fountains. The first person to display an image through a bundle of optical fibers was a medical student in Germany by the name of Heinrich Lamm, who, in 1930, used a bundle of fibers to project the image of a light bulb. In his research, Lamm ultimately used optical fibers to observe and probe areas of the human body without making large incisions. From that point on, serious research in optical fibers ensued. Expanding later with the development of the laser. Fiber optics are glass fibers that transmit laser light that can contain digital information more quickly and efficiently than metal cables. Where are fiber optics used today? The transmission of light information through optical fibers has had a huge impact on the technological world. The medical field has benefited greatly from the use of flexible fiber optic bundles that enable the viewing of areas of the body that would otherwise be inaccessible. Communications is probably the field that is benefiting. The most from the advent of fiber optic technology.
long-distance telephone, computer, and television signals use fiber optic cables. Some systems even use fiber optics to transmit information directly to the home or business. Fiber optics can transmit large amounts of data at high speeds permitting hundreds of television channels. Very high speed internet connections, and telephone conversations to be sent and received at the same time. Where are fiber optics used today? The transmission of light information through optical fibers has had a huge impact on the technological world. The medical field has benefited greatly from the use of flexible fiber optic bundles that enable the viewing of areas of the body that would otherwise be inaccessible. Communications is probably the field that is benefiting. The most from the advent of fiber optic technology. Long distance telephone, computer, and television signals use fiber optic cables. Some systems even use fiber optics to transmit information directly to the home or business. Fiber optics can transmit large amounts of data at high speeds permitting hundreds of television channels. Very high speed internet connections, and telephone conversations to be sent and received at the same time. What is the diffraction of light? Reflection and refraction use the ray model of light. But, when light goes through a very small opening the ray model is no longer sufficient. The wave properties of light become important. Suppose you pass light through a round aperture whose diameter you can change. Let the light fall on a screen. As you first begin reducing the size of the hole you'll find the size of the bright spot shrinking. But, when the hole becomes very small a strange thing happens. The spot no longer shrinks, but its outer edge becomes fuzzy. Light begins to bend around the edge of the hole. Diffraction also occurs when light is sent through narrow slits or if there are small objects that cast shadows in a broader beam of light. Diffraction occurs with all types of waves. You can often see it in water waves and it is one reason that Sound waves spread when they come through a door or window. What is the diffraction of light? Reflection and refraction use the ray model of light. But, when light goes through a very small opening the ray model is no longer sufficient. The wave properties of light become important. Suppose you pass light through a round aperture whose diameter you can change. Let the light fall on a screen. As you first begin reducing the size of the hole you will find the size of the bright spot shrinking. But, when the hole becomes very small a strange thing happens. The spot no longer shrinks, but its outer edge becomes fuzzy. Light begins to bend around the edge of the hole. 
Diffraction also occurs when light is sent through narrow slits or if there are small objects that cast shadows in a broader beam of light. Diffraction occurs with all types of waves. You can often see it in water waves and it is one reason that sound waves spread when they come through a door or window. What is the interference of light? We've explored wave interference before in the waves chapter. The key to the interference of light is that the two or more waves interfering must have the same wavelength and phase. While interference can be seen with ordinary light, interference is most easily seen using laser light. If light from a laser passes through two slits that are a small distance apart the diffraction patterns from the two slits will overlap. When they do a pattern of light and dark bands will be seen. The bright bands are where waves from the two slits are constructively interfering. The distance the light has traveled from the two slits will be equal or they will differ by an integer number of wavelengths. The dark bands occur when the waves destructively interfere. In this case the difference in distance light from the two slits will have traveled will be an odd number of half wavelengths. That is, one half, three halves, five halves, etc. Light can also interfere if it is reflected off two closely spaced interfaces, like the two surfaces of a soap bubble or oil film. What is the interference of light? We've explored wave interference before in the waves chapter. The key to the interference of light is that the two or more waves interfering must have the same wavelength and phase. While interference can be seen with ordinary light, interference is most easily seen using laser light. If light from a laser passes through two slits that are a small distance apart the diffraction patterns from the two slits will overlap. When they do a pattern of light and dark bands will be seen. The bright bands are where waves from the two slits are constructively interfering. The distance the light has traveled from the two slits will be equal or they will differ by an integer number of wavelengths. The dark bands occur when the waves destructively interfere. In this case the difference in distance light from the two slits will have traveled will be an odd number of half wavelengths. That is, one half, three halves, five halves, etc. Light can also interfere if it is reflected off two closely spaced interfaces, like the two surfaces of a soap bubble or oil film. Why do soap bubbles and gasoline spills create different color reflections? Iridescence is the spectrum of colors that are produced when 
light hits a thin film such as a soap bubble or gasoline layer. The interference of light waves resulting from reflections of light off the two surfaces of the thin film causes iridescence. A soap bubble displays an iridescent pattern because light reflects off the front and back surfaces of the soap bubbles. As the thickness of the layer varies, the interference between the two reflections will vary, causing the color to vary. Gasoline spills are easily seen on wet roads, this is not because people spill more gas when it has rained. But is instead due to the iridescent patterns that result from light. Reflecting off of the top of the gasoline, and the boundary between the gasoline and water. The resulting pattern appears as the colors of the visible light spectrum in the thin film of gasoline. Why do soap bubbles and gasoline spills create different color reflections? Iridescence is the spectrum of colors that are produced when light hits a thin film such as a soap bubble or gasoline layer. The interference of light waves resulting from reflections of Light off the two surfaces of the thin film causes iridescence. A soap bubble displays an iridescent pattern because light reflects off the front and back surfaces of the soap bubbles. As the thickness of the layer varies, the interference between the two reflections will vary, causing the color to vary. Gasoline spills are easily seen on wet roads, this is not because people spill more gas when it has rained. But is instead due to the iridescent patterns that result from light. Reflecting off of the top of the gasoline, and the boundary between the gasoline and water. The resulting pattern appears as the colors of the visible light spectrum in the thin film of gasoline. What is white light? White light is the combination of all the colors in the visible light spectrum. When separated from each other, the different wavelengths have different colors. The longest wavelength light is the color red, and decreasing wavelengths result in orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and finally, the shortest wavelength visible color, violet. What is white light? White light is the combination of all the colors in the visible light spectrum. When separated from each other, the different wavelengths have different colors. The longest wavelength light is the color red, and decreasing wavelengths result in orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and finally, the shortest wavelength visible color, violet. Who is Roy G? B.I.V. The colors of the visible light spectrum, 
in order from long wavelength to short. Can be remembered using the fictitious name Roiji. BIV, which is an acronym for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Each individual color has a particular wavelength. And as the wavelength changes, the color changes to the next color on the spectrum. When combined with the appropriate intensities these colors form white light. Who is Roy G? BIV? The colors of the visible light spectrum, in order from long wavelength to short, can be remembered using the fictitious name Roy G. BIV, which is an acronym for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Each individual color has a particular wavelength. And as the wavelength changes, the color changes to the next color on the spectrum. When combined with the appropriate intensities these colors form white light. What is indigo? Indigo is the color between blue and violet in the spectrum, but almost no one can distinguish that color. What is indigo? Indigo is the color between blue and violet in the spectrum, but almost no one can distinguish that color. Why, then are there seven colors rather than six? It's because Isaac Newton was drawing an analogy between color and musical tones. There are seven notes in the familiar European scale A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So, Newton decided there should be seven colors in the spectrum, and he identified indigo as the seventh. So don't be too disappointed if you can't see it. Why, then are there seven colors rather than six? It's because Isaac Newton was drawing an analogy between color and musical tones. There are seven notes in the familiar European scale A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So. Newton decided there should be seven colors in the spectrum, and he identified indigo as the seventh. So don't be too disappointed if you can't see it. What is indigo? Indigo is the color between blue and violet in the spectrum, but almost no one can distinguish that color.
What does a mirror reverse? If you look in a mirror you seem to see yourself reversed left to right. Your left eye appears to be your right eye in the mirror. Yet the vertical direction is not reversed. Your chin is still at the bottom of your face. How is the human voice similar to a wind instrument? The vibrating source of the human voice are the vocal cords in the throat. Their vibration, at a relatively low frequency of 125 Hz, creates oscillations in the air that fills the throat and mouth. By varying the size and shape of your mouth and position of the tongue you can change the frequency of the sound as well as the relative amplitude of the harmonics. Try it yourself. Sing a constant pitch. While you vocalize the vowel sounds dash A, E, I, O, and U. Note how you change the shape of your mouth and position of the tongue when you go from one vowel sound to another. Frequency. The second harmonic is twice its frequency, etc. Many instruments, especially bells, oscillate in modes that are not whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency. These higher modes are called overtones. Overtones include harmonics, but harmonics do not include overtones. Another confusing point is that the first overtone is not the fundamental. The second harmonic is the first overtone. Why is noise pollution dangerous? In the past, noise pollution was only thought to create health effects if the intensity was large enough to cause hearing damage. Studies over the past several decades, however, have found that long-term exposure to noise can cause potentially severe health problems in addition to hearing loss especially for young children. Constant levels of noise, even at low levels, can be enough to cause stress, which can lead to high blood pressure. Insomnia, psychiatric problems and can even impact memory and thinking skills in children. In a German study, scientists found that children living near the Munich airport had higher levels of stress, which impaired their ability to learn. While children living further from the airport did not seem to experience the same problem. What is the optimal shape of a concert hall? Building a concert hall is a mixture of science, engineering, art, and politics. Politics is important because the people who provide the funds have goals for the use of the hall. Consider, for example, the history of Philharmonic Hall in Lincoln Center, New York City. It was originally designed to be similar to the Boston Symphony Hall Long and Narrow. But, a campaign led by one of the major newspapers in the city argued that the 
hall should seat more than 2,400 people, and so the architects made the hall wider. But when it was completed in 1962 critics were very unhappy with the sound. The wider hall did not have enough initial reflections and sounded dry. It was equipped with clouds, reflectors hung from the ceiling. But reflections from them were too delayed to be effective. Another problem was that performers on the stage couldn't hear each other. On the front of many ambulances, why is the word ambulance printed backwards? The word ambulance is printed backwards, left and right reversed. So that when viewed in a mirror specifically, the rear view mirror of a car it will appear correctly, that is. Forwards, ensuring that the driver can read it and respond as quickly as possible. What is an image? Suppose light falls on your face. Light is reflected diffusely from this surface. That is, it is reflected into a wide variety of directions. Consider a very tiny object, like the end of an eyelash. Light from that point will leave in many directions. That point is called an object. An optical device can cause the light rays from the object to converge again to a single point. That point is called the image. How were the first mirrors made? People have seen their reflections in water for hundreds of centuries. But some of the earliest signs of human-made brass and bronze mirrors have been mentioned in the Bible and in ancient Egyptian, Greek, and Roman literature. The earliest glass mirrors, backed with shiny metal, appeared in Italy during the 14th century. The original process for creating a glass mirror was to coat one side of glass with mercury and polished tinfoil. The German chemist Justus von Liebig, 1803-1873, in 1835 developed a method for silvering a mirror. His process consisted of pouring a compound containing ammonia and silver onto the back of the glass. Formaldehyde removed the ammonia, leaving a shiny metallic silver surface that reflected the light. Today, most mirrors are made by evaporating metallic aluminium directly on the glass. What is the diffraction of light? Reflection and refraction use the ray model of light. But, when light goes through a very small opening the ray model is no longer sufficient. The wave properties of light become important. Suppose you pass light through a round aperture whose diameter you can change. Let the light fall on a screen. As you first begin reducing the size of the hole you'll find the size of the bright spot shrinking. But, 
when the hole becomes very small a strange thing happens. The spot no longer shrinks, but its outer edge becomes fuzzy. Light begins to bend around the edge of the hole. Diffraction also occurs when light is sent through narrow slits or if there are small objects that cast shadows in a broader beam of light. Diffraction occurs with all types of waves. You can often see it in water waves and it is one reason that sound waves spread when they come through a door or window. What is a concave mirror and what is it used for? A concave mirror is curved inward so that the incident rays of light are reflected and can be brought together. If the rays striking the mirror were parallel to each other, as they would be from a distant source, then the reflected rays converge at the focal point. Concave mirrors are typically used to focus waves, whether it is a microwave signal to a receiver, or light to an observer. They can produce real images. If, however, the object is closer to the mirror than the focal point, as is often the case with a concave bathroom mirror, the image is virtual and upright. If you look at the reflection of a more distant object, like the bathroom wall, you'll notice that it is upside down, or inverted. The wall is farther away from the mirror than the focal point. And its image is real. A point. Therefore convex mirrors form virtual images. Convex mirrors are used for security purposes in stores because they broaden the reflected field of vision. Allowing clerks to see a large section of the store. The images are smaller than the objects, but the mirrors help to see a wide area. What happens if you look at a mirror while lying down? Now left and right are not reversed your chin is on the same side of both you and your image. But if your right eye was higher than your left, then in the image the left eye will be higher. What are difference tones? Difference tones are frequencies that are produced as a result of two different frequencies mixing with each other. This mixing can only occur if a device is nonlinear. That is, if the output is not a multiple of the input, you can create difference tones with two toy slide whistles. Place both in your mouth and blow hard. Adjust their length so that the two tones are the same pitch. Then adjust one. As you move its pitch away from the other you will hear a low-pitched sound whose pitch increases as the two whistles pitches get further apart. For example, if the high frequency sound was 812 Hz, while the lower frequency was 756 Hz. The difference tone from the interfering sound waves would be 144 Hz. The nonlinear device in this case is your ear.
What is the interference of light? We've explored wave interference before in the waves chapter. The key to the interference of light is that the two or more, waves interfering must have the same wavelength and phase. While interference can be seen with ordinary light, interference is most easily seen using laser light. If light from a laser passes through two slits that are a small distance apart the diffraction patterns from the two slits will overlap. When they do a pattern of light and dark bands will be seen. The bright bands are where waves from the two slits are constructively interfering. The distance the light has traveled from the two slits will be equal or they will differ by an integer number of wavelengths. The dark bands occur when the waves destructively interfere. In this case the difference in distance light from the two slits will have traveled will be an odd number of half wavelengths. That is, one half, three halves, five halves, etc. Light can also interfere if it is reflected off two closely spaced interfaces, like the two surfaces of a soap bubble or oil film. What are total internal reflection and critical angle? Total internal reflection occurs when a ray of light in a medium with a higher index of refraction strikes the interface between that medium and one with a lower index of refraction. When the incident rays are at a small angle with respect to the perpendicular to the interface the rays pass through the interface being refracted to a larger angle. As the angle of incidence increases so does the refracted angle. At the critical angle the refracted angle is 90 degrees, that is, the ray's direction is along the interface. If the angle of incidence is increased any more there is only a reflected ray. The refracted ray no longer exists. Because all the light is reflected it is called total internal reflection. How do wind instruments like flutes, saxophones, and trumpets produce sounds? In wind instruments the column of air is the oscillating object. The musician must create the oscillation. Perhaps you have blown over the top of a soda bottle and created a tone. When you blow some of the air goes into the bottle. That increased air pressure is reflected off the bottom of the bottle and returns to the top where it deflects the blown air upward. This process repeats. Resulting in a tone whose frequency depends on the length of the bottle. The energy in your breath is converted into the energy of oscillation of the air in the bottle. A flute works in a similar way, where the player blows over a hole in the side of the flute. The other end of the flute is open. The sound wave is reflected because the impedance in the tube is different from that of the room air. The spectrum of a flute contains all harmonics. If the player blows harder and changes the location of her 
top lip she can make the flute play one or two octaves higher. In other words, the fundamental frequency of the flute is increased by a factor of two or four. The frequency of a flute or other woodwind instrument can be changed by opening holes along the side of the instrument. This shortens the length of the oscillating air column, increasing the frequency. In a saxophone or clarinet the vibrations are caused by a thin piece of wood called the reed. The player blows through a gap between the reed and the instrument's mouthpiece. The pulse of air is reflected off the end of the instrument and returns to the reed. Pushing it open to admit another pulse of air. Double reed instruments like the oboe and bassoon work in the same way. The clarinet is shaped like a cylinder. Its spectrum consists of only the odd harmonics, 1, 3, 5, and 7. Etc. A clarinet can be played in a higher register by opening a small hole near. The mouthpiece that strongly reduces the amplitude of the fundamental tone. The new pitch is an octave and a fourth higher than the lower register. Saxophones are not shaped like cylinders, but like cones. As a result all harmonics are included in its spectrum. And opening the register key raises the instrument's pitch by one octave. In a bugle, trumpet, trombone, French horn, or other brass instrument the oscillations are caused by the player's lips. The lips act as a valve, causing pulses of air into the instrument which causes the oscillations in the air column. In a brass instrument the fundamental tone is absent. By adjusting the tightness of the lips the player can cause the instrument to play at the second, third, fourth harmonic, etc. The valves on a brass instrument add small lengths of tubing, lowering the pitch. In a trombone the length of the tube can be varied continuously, allowing any frequency to be played. The spectrum of a brass instrument depends strongly on its pitch and loudness. The louder it is played, the more energy there is in the higher harmonics. Some synthesizers like this one use keyboards to select the sound to be generated while others use computers. The ability of a synthesizer to imitate various instruments is accomplished using frequency modulated synthesis to create voices. Where are fiber optics used today? The transmission of light information through optical fibers has had a huge impact on the technological world. The medical field has benefited greatly from the use of flexible fiber optic bundles that enable the viewing of areas of the body that would otherwise be inaccessible. Communications is probably the field that is benefiting. The most from the advent of fiber optic technology. Long distance telephone, computer, and television signals use fiber optic cables. Some systems even use fiber optics to transmit information directly to the home or business. Fiber optics can transmit large amounts of data at high speeds, permitting hundreds of television channels. 
very high speed internet connections, and telephone conversations to be sent and received at the same time. How does a synthesizer imitate any musical instrument? A synthesizer is an electronic device that generates, alters, and combines a variety of waveforms to produce complex sounds. Often a piano type keyboard allows the musician to select the notes to be constructed. Synthesizers may use electronic circuits to create the tones or use software that controls a circuit that converts a digital number to a voltage. Some synthesizers use a computer rather than a keyboard to select the notes. The computer can then control electronic circuits through the MIDI interface. The most common method of creating the synthesized sounds is to use a frequency. Modulated synthesis that creates higher harmonics that match those of the musical instrument being imitated. Or create an entirely new musical sound. Instruments also have characteristic attacks, sustained times, and decays. Attack describes how fast the amplitude rises from zero to its full value. Sustained times describe how long the tone amplitude remains the same. And decay describes how the amplitude decreases at the end of the played note. Synthesizers can create hundreds of different sounds, typically called voices. How did fiber optics originate? The idea that light could travel through glass strands originated as far back as the 1840s. When physicists Daniel Collodin and Jacques Bobinet, 1794-1872, demonstrated that light could travel through bending water jets in fountains. The first person to display an image through a bundle of optical fibers was a medical student in Germany by the name of Heinrich Lamm, who, in 1930, used a bundle of fibers to project the image of a light bulb. In his research, Lamm ultimately used optical fibers to observe and probe areas of the human body without making large incisions. From that point on, serious research in optical fibers ensued. Expanding later with the development of the laser. Fiber optics are glass fibers that transmit laser light that can contain digital information more quickly and efficiently than metal cables. How then does a one-way mirror work? First, the mirror isn't totally reflecting. It transmits half the light and reflects the other half. The second requirement has to do with lighting. It is imperative that the observation room remain dark, because if a lamp were turned on, some of that light would pass through into the interrogation room as well. How do one-way mirrors, 
the ones used in interrogation rooms, work? A one-way mirror seems to be a mirror when seen from one side. But as a window when seen from the opposite side. Thus the window is disguised as a mirror to allow secret surveillance. Physically, there is no such thing as a one-way mirror. That is, the amount of light reflected from one side is the same as that reflected from the other. The light transmitted in one direction is equal that transmitted in the opposite direction. Why, then are there seven colors rather than six? It's because Isaac Newton was drawing an analogy between color and musical tones. There are seven notes in the familiar European scale A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So, Newton decided there should be seven colors in the spectrum, and he identified indigo as the seventh. So don't be too disappointed if you can't see it. If you open your eyes underwater, can you see out of the water? Another example of total internal reflection can be seen when you are underwater. If you look straight up out of the water, you will see the sky and any other visible surroundings directly above the water. If, however, you look out of the water at an angle of 48 degrees or more from the vertical, you will not see out of the water, but instead will see a reflection from the bottom of the water. The next time you are in a pool or a lake, try looking up out of the water and you will see a point on the surface where you no longer can see out of the pool, for the light has reached its critical angle. Why do soap bubbles and gasoline spills create different color reflections? Iridescence is the spectrum of colors that are produced when Light hits a thin film such as a soap bubble or gasoline layer. The interference of light waves resulting from reflections of Light off the two surfaces of the thin film causes iridescence. A soap bubble displays an iridescent pattern because light Reflects off the front and back surfaces of the soap bubbles. As the thickness of the layer varies, the interference between the two reflections will vary, causing the color to vary. Gasoline spills are easily seen on wet roads, this is not because people spill more gas when it has rained, but is instead due to the iridescent patterns that result from light. Reflecting off of the top of the gasoline, and the boundary between the gasoline and water. The resulting pattern appears as the colors of the visible light spectrum in the thin film of gasoline. How do day slash night rear view mirrors function in vehicles?
when drivers traveling at night encounter a bright light from the vehicle behind them shining in their eyes. Many will flip a tab on the underside of the rear view mirror to deflect the light up toward the ceiling of the car. The silvered surface of the mirror reflects approximately 85 to 90 percent of the incident light on the mirror, which is now directed toward the ceiling. The remaining 10 to 15 percent of the light is reflected by the front of the glass on the mirror. The mirror is wedge shaped, thicker at the top than at the bottom. Thus the front surface is angled downward to allow the much smaller amount of light to be reflected into the driver's eyes. Who is Roy G? B.I.V. The colors of the visible light spectrum, in order from long wavelength to short, can be remembered using the fictitious name Roy G. BIV, which is an acronym for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Each individual color has a particular wavelength. And as the wavelength changes, the color changes to the next color on the spectrum. When combined with the appropriate intensities these colors form white light. Does my neighbor's motorcycle have to be that loud? At times, engineers try to achieve just the right sound or noise for a particular product. The product, whether it's a vacuum cleaner, lawnmower, or motorcycle, needs to be quiet enough so as not to cause stress, yet has to have enough sound to seem powerful. For example, Muffler technology has the ability to greatly reduce the noise a motorcycle produces. Yet many engineers and manufacturers feel that consumers would not purchase the product if it does not sound powerful enough. What was the first concert hall to be designed by an acoustical physicist? Boston Symphony Hall, designed by physicist Wallace Clement Sabina, 1868-1919. Is the first concert hall designed specifically to enhance the sound of an orchestra. Sabina, who designed the hall in the late 1890s, discovered the relationship between sound intensity, absorption, and reverberation time. Sound reflections can either enhance or ruin a sound. Sabina discovered that having strong reflections immediately after a sound was produced would enhance the acoustics. But if sound was reflected midway between the source and the listener it would detract from the acoustics because the time of travel would be significantly different. Sabine's Boston Symphony Hall, built in 1900, established an excellent reputation for sound quality. Mostly due to the choices of sound absorption materials as well as the strategic placement of reflecting material. The goal was to use the sound reflecting materials, high percent reflection ratios. To create strong initial reflections, 
while using sound absorbing materials, low percent reflection ratios. To absorb most of the energy from sound that would ordinarily reflect off of the high ceiling and the side walls in the rear of the hall. In 1973, Mr. Avery Fisher contributed over $10 million to support a complete reconstruction of the hall, and the hall is now named after him. The changes improved the acoustics. But the large stage reduced the loudness of bass sounds and the initial reflections were still too strong. Curved surfaces on the stage made of extremely tight grain maple would have improved bass problem. And reflectors consisting of 30,000 dowel rods were installed on the side walls. Except for classical music concerts and opera, most performances use electronic amplification. Loudspeakers can be located throughout the hall. And their response to different frequencies can be adjusted to compensate for shortcomings in the hall. The signal to speakers far from the stage can be delayed. So sound from all speakers arrives at the same time. Further, these changes can be adjusted so that the hall has the best acoustics for any type of use. What is a real image? A concave mirror or a convex lens can redirect light from an object so that it does converge to a single point. That point is a real image. It is in front of a concave mirror and on the other side of a convex lens from the object. If you place a screen, piece of paper, or wall at the location of the image you will see it on that surface. How do optical fibers use total internal reflection to transmit information? Strands of glass fiber, commonly known as optical fibers. Use the principle of total internal reflection to transmit information near the speed of light. The fiber has an inner core of glass with a high refractive index surrounded by a cladding of glass with a lower index. A laser sends light into the end of a strand of fiber. When the light strikes the interface between the core and the cladding, the light is reflected back into the cable, continuing to move down the length of the fiber. Light or near-infrared radiation can travel kilometers through fibers without significant energy loss. One reason is the total internal reflection. The second reason is that are made from materials designed to absorb as little as possible of the infrared radiation. A second advantage of optical fibers is that information sent through the fibers is more secure because it doesn't escape the fiber and thus be accessible to those trying to intercept the information. What happens when light hits a sheet of paper? Replace the mirror with a sheet of paper. Darken the room. Aim the flashlight at the paper and use a second sheet to catch the reflection. 
you will see that the second sheet is illuminated in many different locations. The light is reflected from the paper, but into many directions. This kind of reflection is called diffuse reflection. Polished, smooth surfaces that do not absorb light are the best reflectors. Examples of reflective materials are shiny metals, whereas non-reflective materials are dull metals, wood, and stone. What is the difference between pitch and frequency? Frequency, like sound intensity, is a physical property. Pitch, like loudness, is a description of how the ear and brain interpret the sound. Pitch is primarily dependent on frequency, but depends somewhat on loudness. Timber, an envelope, which will be discussed below. Humans hear pitch in terms of the ratio of two tones. The ear perceives two notes to be equally spaced if they are related by a multiplicative factor. For example, the frequency of corresponding notes of adjacent octaves differ by a factor of two notes. In common chords are related by ratios of 3 colon 2, 4 colon 3, 5 colon 4, etc. In the same way, the perceived difference in pitch between 100 Hz and 150 Hz is the same as between 1000 Hz and 1500 Hz. What is white light? White light is the combination of all the colors in the visible light spectrum. When separated from each other, the different wavelengths have different colors. The longest wavelength light is the color red, and decreasing wavelengths result in orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and finally, the shortest wavelength visible color, violet. Does a mirror produce an image? The light reflected from an object by a flat, or plane, mirror is not redirected so it will converge again. What you see when you look in a mirror is a virtual image. It is located behind the mirror. Some of the rays from the object are reflected by the mirror and enter your eye. Your eye believes that all these rays came from a single point, and that point is behind the mirror. The image isn't real, it is virtual. Virtual images can also be formed by lenses. They cannot be focused on a screen. What limits have been established to reduce exposure to noise pollution? The World Health Organization has recommended that noise during sleep be limited to a level of 35 decibels. And governments are beginning to place. Restrictions on noise levels in both residential and business environments. In the Netherlands, for example, regulations specify that new homes may not be built. 
in areas of high noise levels those that exceed average noise levels of 50 decibels. In the United States, employers must provide hearing protection for those who endure noise levels of 90 decibels for more than 8 hours a day. How does the spectrum of a sound relate to its waveform? Jean Baptiste Fourier, 1768-1830, a French mathematician and physicist, made discoveries in a number of fields, including the greenhouse effect. He developed mathematical tools known as Fourier series and transforms that are used in a wide variety of applications. The Fourier theorem states that any repetitive waveform can be constructed from a series of waves of specific frequencies, of fundamental and higher harmonics. The reverse is also true if you add together waves of frequencies f, 2f, 3f, etc., specifying their amplitudes, you can construct a complex waveform. Using Fourier analysis, then you can record the waveform of a musical instrument and determine the amplitudes of the harmonics of which it is made, that is, its spectrum. Today Fourier analysis is very easy to do. Most computers either have built-in microphones or can use an external microphone. Free software can be downloaded from the web that will display the spectrum. Does a musical tone have a single frequency? It does not have a single frequency, but many. To understand why, consider a stringed instrument like a guitar, piano, or violin. The string can oscillate in response to it being plucked, hit, or bowed. Standing waves will be formed as they would be if you shook a rope back and forth. By shaking it at different frequencies you can make it oscillate in several different modes. The lowest frequency results in nodes only at the ends. Twice this frequency produces nodes at the ends plus one in the middle. Three times the lowest frequency give nodes at the ends plus two nodes at one third and two thirds its length. If you pluck, hit, or bow the string of a stringed instrument you cause it to vibrate. In many of those nodes at the same time, depending on the location you plucked it, the lowest frequency of oscillation is called the fundamental frequency. Plucking the string one-fourth from one end results in oscillations at 2, 3, 4, 6, and 7 times the fundamental frequency. The higher frequencies are called harmonics. For example, if the fundamental frequency were middle C, 256 Hz, then the second harmonic would have a frequency of 512 Hz, the third 728 Hz, the fourth 1024 Hz, etc. The sound made by the vibrating string is very weak. On acoustic stringed instruments the strings pass over the bridge that transmits the oscillations to the top plate of the body of the instrument. 
Low frequency sounds also excite oscillations in the ear and in the bottom plate of the guitar's body. Sounds from the oscillations of the ear pass through. The sound holes in the top plate into the surrounding air. The amplitude of the fundamental frequency is the largest. The relative amplitudes of the higher. Harmonics depend not only on the string, but the shape and size of the body of the instrument. Electric guitars will be discussed in the chapter on magnetism. The relative intensities of the higher harmonics depend on the instrument. The sound spectrum produced by the instrument is characterized by these relative amplitudes. The spectrum is also called the quality of sound, or the timber. The sound quality also depends on how the sound starts and stops. How do we see objects? In order to see an object, light from the object must enter our eyes. We can see stars, lightning, and light bulbs because they are emitting or giving off light. We depend on the light emitted from these sources in order to see objects that don't emit light we see those objects because they reflect light into our eyes. The paper on which this book is printed, for example, does not emit light. We see it because the paper reflects light into our eyes. How do we see objects? In order to see an object, light from the object must enter our eyes. We can see stars, lightning, and light bulbs because they are emitting or giving off light. We depend on the light emitted from these sources in order to see objects that don't emit light we see those objects because they reflect light into our eyes. The paper on which this book is printed, for example, does not emit light. We see it because the paper reflects light into our eyes.